and welcome to Working Together. This is the last in our series of interviews um, where we're exploring the value of collaboration, cooperation and co-working in business. Um, over the last few weeks, I've been speaking to some really inspiring people um, to learn how collaboration supported their business journey. If you don't know me already, my name's Beth and I'm the Ops Manager here at The Projects, um, which is a co-working members club on Ship Street. Our mission is to support entrepreneurs and innovators by creating a space where members can ac access all the tools, resources, learning and support that they need to thrive. Um, we really love seeing collaboration come together in our community, which is why we're really pleased to introduce one of Brighton's premier collaborators <laughs> and communicators, um, Toby Moore. Toby Moore is, um, curates TEDx as well as founding the Content Club and is also a very dear friend. So very pleased to have him on with us today. Hi, Toby. Hello, how are you? I'm good, how are you? Yeah, super duper, thank you. I've been told by you that I should be standing up for this because it's the key to success. Why? Well, why I, I've just learned over the, the, the last few weeks and months that, um, that I, 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 I feel much more myself on these Zoomy Zooms when I'm standing up. So um, <laughs> I think given your environment, I think sitting down might just work better for you, but you know, who am I? And how has everything been over lockdown? The... It's been, I feel very guilty to admit that it's been relatively pleasant. Um, spending, we just moved house to a much more spacious place with much more outdoor space and immediate access to the beach and so on. Um, and um, our little girl turned one during lockdown as well and learned to walk and all of those sorts of things. So we've actually been having a pretty good time and squeezing work in around the edges as and when needed. Uh, so actually, I've been having a pretty good time. Um, uh, but don't tell too many people that. I <laughs> um, so um, you are, um, you curate TEDx, which I'm going to ask you about in a little bit. But cool. first, tell me about Content Club. Tell me about how it started, what you guys do. Yeah, Content Club is a company and community for content creators and we just do a billion and one different things in order to make people that create content enjoy the process more, see more success from it, uh, make it more very efficient and a practical thing but also a creative and enjoyable thing too. So um, that's changed a lot for me personally just in terms of day to day because of lockdown because a lot of it is focused around meeting people in real life in places like projects and platform nine and other office spaces and so on and doing lots of face-to-face -face teaching and coaching and training and stuff and that's changed a lot so but it has pushed me in some interesting directions because it's made me think okay well how do i take this more online on a day-to-day -day basis and then how does that change the audience that i can reach so now we're like okay well content club can be a global phenomenon now rather than just a brighton based one so um so that's so that's kind of what we've been doing and yeah shifting from organizing lots of events for content creators through to how can we create lots of online tools and resources for content creators so i think coming out of lockdown it will it will look like a different business anybody that's been to content club or has met you um or the people that you work with knows that a lot of so much of the value is through the, the community in a lockdown situation how how are you managing to kind of keep that sense of community without kind of being able to touch and see people in 3d yeah, I've honestly found it really difficult and it took me a number of weeks to find the confidence just to try something, to be completely open and honest about it because um, I've always placed such a value. And the things that you've just talked about, about creating a welcoming space, you know, being a place where people of any level and skillability and ambition and so on can come together and feel like they're, that, that, that they all belong together in that place. Uh, that's something that I've always prided what I've done and what we've done with Content Club on. And obviously moving that online feels like a complete challenge. And what I traditionally feel like are the skills and the behaviors required in order to make that happen. You know, I sort of feel like I've got my arms tied behind my back when I'm, when I'm doing stuff online. So it took me a few weeks to be brave enough just to host an online meetup, you know, when everyone else was doing it and, and, and adapting online quite quickly. I was like, oh, I don't, I don't even know if I want to do that. So yeah, we've tried a few different things and each one has worked in its different own different way. And uh, I think what I really realized, particularly at the beginning of this whole coronavirus process is that because I was sort of surrounded by people, i.e. my family all day and every day, and I didn't really have a chance to get bored. If you've got, I think there's this, 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 there's this sort of divide of people, people that have kids and people that don't, and people that have kids don't get bored during lockdown because they're just constantly like, ah, 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 catch the thing, you know, uh, <laughs> whereas people, you know, it's, so it's a bit different without being uh, uh, judgmental about it. It's just different. And 
so I sort of walked into these sort of uh, this process of hosting online stuff, thinking that people would just be in the same position that I was. Whereas actually, you know, we've been hosting stuff on Fridays and people would go, oh, do you know, this was such a lovely thing because these were the first time I got to talk to anyone else this week. And I just feel like, huh. you know, that's, and then I sort of thought, oh, do you know what, learning stuff is just secondary and it always has been anyway. You know, bringing people together, just putting the invitation out there and just being the person that creates the platform for people to come together. And I remember the second one that we did, we spent like 20 minutes just talking about children's books. Do you know what I mean? And people were like, Alice in Wonderland's my favorite children's book. And, da, 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 da. and, and it was just and like, and I got to the end of it and I was like, oh my God, I hated that conversation, you know, because it wasn't work focused at all. And then everyone else was just like, oh, we had such a good time. That was such a wonderful thing, you know, getting all these messages and stuff. And I was like, oh, hang on a minute. You know, I, I do need to look at this differently. And like people's needs right now are completely different and I think we're sort of coming to a different place now where people are starting to feel like they can they can start to focus more on work and, and learning and so on but um but at the same time just the just being the person or being the brand or being the platform that that that, that puts the flag up in the air and says come meet here and let's hang out I think that's that's the most useful and hopefully the most noble thing that that the, that the likes of us can be doing at the moment. Absolutely. I think um, I, I, I think the businesses that I've been watching and every again, this this is with no judgment and it's such a tricky and sensitive area because everybody's scrambling to, you know, keep money coming in and, every, and you know, everyone needs to do what they can do. But I think the businesses that I've watched who can afford to um, do really well are the, are the ones that have gone, let's just not focus on money making efforts so much over the, these months and just really really go back to our purpose and really mm. um, see how we can add value we're not trying to take money from it at the moment and so I think things like the content club um, you know the online events that have been going really well um, I've seen are the ones where I was reading an article about like the value of chit chat so like um, <laughs> the value of people um, being able to walk past each other, say in like a co-working space or in any sort of community in an office, in a cafe, and just be like, oh, hi, how are you? How's, how are things going? And then the, the way that these spark ideas and the, the way that we can collaborate through those um, is, I've, I've, I've seen it myself running a co-working space, just people accidentally meeting and then ended up doing collaborations and running businesses together. Oh, yeah. and, and, it, and those are, that, that's how it happens. It's really cool to watch as well. It's beautiful to watch. Um, and and I guess what is interesting to me is though those conversations, 20 minute conversations about Alice in Wonderland are the conversations where people are doing business, people are um, sharing ideas, they're developing relationships. Well, and yeah, because ultimately, like, you know, and this is something that I bash people over the head with at Content Club all the time, is just like, you know, people buy from people and people buy from people that they trust. But, you know, but that, that, is, it is, it, that is more so true of people you go into to business with, you know, whether that's partnerships, whether that's, you know, co-founding something together or whatever. Um, and that element of trust is, 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 is even more vital at, at those types of relationships than it is with the likes of maybe customer and supplier relationships. And, and, and you need that. Like, you know, you don't just sort of go, oh, well, you're selling X and I'm selling Y. And wouldn't it be great if we could sell X, Y, Z to together like you know very few unless they're very sort of very sort of uh, mechanical in their approach to in, in product development and selling and so on those rarely are effective relationships you know people I'm working with a, the, the new client actually that has, has appeared in my life over lockdown and they are the they are the coming together of two businesses and uh, one's a recruitment company and one's a technology consultancy company like they're not actually very likely partners at all so when i was sort of scratching at the surface and be like okay well why are these two companies coming together and they're telling me well we were just mates you know we just really like each other we used to work together here and we you know we used to spend all this time together and we were sharing lots of ideas over our businesses and so on and eventually it was just like we should just do this together because it will be better for everybody and and, I, and that's just exactly the kind of uh that's exactly how these things should come together and conversations like Alice in Wonderland and what your favorite beer is and, you know, and where are we going on holiday and all these sorts of things. These are all trust building exercises, right? Whether it's intentional or not. And uh, the more the spaces, places, platforms and communities and so on can enable those types of conversations, the more likely you are to see successful collaborations and partnerships come of that. Would you say that that's your kind of, if you're looking for a, you say you go out looking for, a, has there always been by chance that you've ended up working with people or through friendships? Have you, have you ever gone out and said, I'm looking for this person to collaborate? Everything with? that I try and do, everything that I intend to do doesn't happen. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, I, you know, I've got, a, I've got a, a, a 
some words that I live by, which are kind of like the more the more I feel that I know something, the more likely that I am to be wrong about it. You know, and uh, particularly when it comes to politics. Is that right? Control over our lives. Yeah. So so, and I think everything everything you can. I think it's good to go into the world with intentions, and it's good to go into the world with very clear behaviours, and to to know what your vision and your your values and your mission is, if you like. Um, and, and this is why I like content so much as a thing is because content is the most effective way of sharing those ideas and ambitions outside of a, of a conversation, right? So, and um, that's why I really like helping people to enable their ability to create stuff because it's there. It's actually what you're really doing is enabling their ability to share ideas and, 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 and learn how to be like that self-expression, that authentic self-expression of like, how do I really feel about this? What do I really want? And how do I tell people? How do I share people? How do I share that with people? And yeah, and I think it is the job of, of, of platforms and places to just enable that, right? Yeah, absolutely. Um, it just occurred to me that as, you were, as, as we were talking about content, there might be people that have no idea what content is. Um, we all know what the word content is. <laughs> what, what, I mean, what, what, how would you describe Content. There's nothing worse than taking on a new client and three months into the relationship, they ask you that question. <laughs> <laughs> and I promise you it happens. Um, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I, I've got a very kind of uh, consultant style answer to the question, which is it's everything, right? If it's, a, if, it, if it's an asset you can capture and use somehow in order to share an idea or an experience or whatever with others, uh, it's content. But that's a real life thing or an online thing. You know, conversations are content. That's a really good way of thinking about things like we are having a conversation right now and once that conversation materializes online it's content um so and then you can transcribe it and turn it into blogs you can publish it as a video you can chop it up into a 60 second instagram post or whatever the, the important thing is is just like capture your ideas share them with people like that's really all you can be expected to do particularly as a business owner or someone who's responsible for for for, for marketing the the thoughts and ideas of a business owner do you know what i mean so I'm a big fan of looking at your um, LinkedIn activity and I always really enjoy seeing what, <laughs> what you comment on and what you're up to. Yeah. It does seem to me that you are a, a big fan of authenticity <laughs> um, and I know that um, a lot of companies are, to say, I, I think it was yesterday or the day before you were you shared a post about um, not just making content for SEO purposes or not just making content for this, you know, for, for a specific purpose. I mean, could you explain to us a little bit about why that doesn't work when you're sharing the mission or, you know, the values of your business? Why what doesn't work? Sorry. Uh, sorry, just sharing your content for like for an SEO purpose, you know, just being oh, like, do like this sort of like tick box. You know, I find that people can spend a huge amount of time and money on these sorts of very technical activities when it comes to content. And sometimes those have value. And I think if you have the energy and the resource and so on to, to throw at that and you can go okay well if we spend eight thousand pounds a year on making this sort of thing and does it make us thirty five thousand pounds over here you know um great go for it but i think if you don't have those kinds of resources and you're not looking at those sorts of measurements and metrics um and um or if you're choosing to look at those measurements and metrics over the importance of other measurements and metrics like are you actually achieving what you told the world you're going to go out and achieve or told yourself that you're going to go out and achieve? Um, I was having a conversation with someone this week about a very similar topic, which is just kind of uh, people end up particularly, you know, so if you've got like business owners or entrepreneurs or whatever that are very much focused on just making money, making money, making money uh, and don't really care how, um, you know, they can make very compromising decisions around other people's happiness and well-being and, and, and futures and livelihoods and so on. At the you know uh, happily at the you know at the benefit of their own, and they'll make you know these sorts of measurements and metrics and tools are perfectly designed for them because it's like okay well how can you screw over the little guy in order to get your thing you know in front of everybody like and here's some cool numbers and metrics and stuff and things you can buy in order to make it happen, and and really you know and, and for me like it comes from a place of compromising your own vision, your own dent or impact that you want to make on the world right so one of the projects I'm working on at the moment is that we want to open an indoor skate park, right? So, um, and there are lots of, you know, if we want to make money out of running an indoor skate park, we're fools, you know, we're idiots. You know, we have to understand that the impact that we're trying to create with a project like that goes far beyond making money because 
if we make a pound of profit out of that in the first two or three years, like we'll be laughing, you know what I mean? So, um, so we have to see way beyond the metrics of, of, of that and work out, well, the reason that we're doing it is because we want to do this and we want to be able to do, we want to provide other young people like with the opportunities that we had when we were growing up and people built these sorts of things for us and so on and so on and so on. Right. So these are, these are the important things to understand and to measure and so on. And like, and, and if you want to go back to sort of talking about content, it's like, well, how are we going to invest in content when it comes to a project like that? You know, like we're going to, what are we going to do? We're going to spend money on advertising it. We're going to spend money on sharing the story about it. We need to be able to pitch like the council and all these sorts of things. And we need to pay for fancy designs and 3D models and things of this thing. And like, these are all costs that we need to invest in in order to make this stuff happen. But with the end goal of going, okay, well, we're going to build a skate park and we're going to change the lives of young people in this space. Uh, what, a, what a nice thing to work towards, right? Um, so, and that, you know, and that's a, there's a spectrum and a scale that those things happen on. Like Content Club, for example, yeah, it needs to make, it needs to make money. And there's, there's, there's things that I, you know, beyond just paying me and the means that I need to live, like, you know, it has financial goals beyond, beyond my existence, right? Um, but it also has impact goals and idea-based goals and things. You know, I want to be able to, like, I can't make that money unless I, unless I actually sort of have very clear intentions about, how I want to affect other people's lives and their ability to share their thoughts and their ideas and achieve the things that they want to achieve and so on. Whereas actually, if I just want to sell widgets online and just like turn a wheel and hope that, that you know, if I can work out what the right speed or whatever to turn that wheel is in order to make more money at the other end, great. That was a very rambly and oh, uh, pedantic response. But <laughs> I just think if you just want to make money, like go into fucking buy a suit and move to London and work in the city, and fuck people over with stocks and shares. Great, go for it, mate. Do you know what I mean? But if you actually want to achieve the thing that you want to achieve, like stop running a business that's like, you know, pretending to help people when really you're just trying to con them out of another 197 pounds a month or something. Do you know what I mean? So. Absolutely. Um, and I quite agree. Um, <laughs> um... <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, you've clearly caught me on a day where this stuff's like. <laughs> It's, it's amazing it's really interesting um I, I love seeing someone so passionate about what is their driving force i mean toby what would you say is your driving force um what does what is the, your purpose you've got you know content club and we'll touch on uh, curation of tedx in a bit but mm -hmm. you know the skate park and all the clients that you work with and all the people that you mm -hmm. collaborate with what is the common thing that, that unifies them <laughs> yeah yeah i get that um it's ideas like i just you know um when i was a kid i just had this like book of inventions and things and anything that would you know dog walking machines through to lasers that turn people into frogs and stuff like that was me as a kid like that's the sort of thing that i would spend hours going through and like and that's my sort of golden thread is life is just sort of like cooking up crazy ideas that no one else thinks are possible and, and then proving to everyone that they can be done you know and that's kind of <laughs> and that's that's but how do you find people to work with who kind of share that that goal um share those values that's a very good question um i think actually just sort of putting that mentality out there and seeing who attracts to it do you know what i mean and i've learned some of these lessons the hard way in the sense that like i've i've, I've, I've i'm one of those people that very readily accepts people into my work life and so on and does make i probably overcommit to collaboration sometimes i'm definitely guilty of that and, and sometimes that gets, and I, and I often tend to be the person that will commit 80% of the work and be happy with someone doing 20% of the work. I've had to really become aware of that and check in with that and change it and shape it so I can have much more equal and generous relationships when it comes to both business, business collaborations and, and other sort of lifey projects. I would say that's something that I've had to learn the hard way and I would definitely caution other people against it if they feel that that's in their character and personality or whatever. But I think, yeah, it comes down to like content creation, you know, is a thing and, and just use when you're creating stuff, like think about that as an opportunity to show people what it is going to be like to work with you. Right. So what do conversations with you feel, look and feel like, what does being in a room with you look and feel like, what does, sharing jokes and and asking each other questions and having meaningful discussions and stuff look and feel like uh, when you're as a you know in terms of a project or a relationship with you you know use content as an as a as an opportunity to do that 
you know, and you talk about like me posting stuff on LinkedIn and I'm very sort of nonchalant about how I use LinkedIn and, and you know, and if I see something that I think is stupid or I don't like, I'll just, I'll gladly say it. <laughs> and, I and, always, uh, for some reason, you're always on the top of my feet. Yeah. I always react very much to your, whatever you put, because it does feel like it's your voice. And I guess um, through our, what do you call it? What do you, what would we call it? A working relationship? <laughs> I don't know what we call it. Yeah. Um, um, through our like getting to know each other, I think that's what I know through the people I see that you work with and um, communicate with. It is that you're very genuine. I think that's a, that's a better word than than authentic. And and and, and people, I don't, it's not a brand because <laughs> I don't think mm. you're. I don't think you're particularly crafting yourself as a brand or maybe you would maybe you say you would well i think there's something i think the big lesson to learn from 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 what i think you're talking about is is actually comes around uh generosity with what you know and a lot of the people i work with in terms of a community point of view particularly those in consulting style jobs get very anxious about sharing their knowledge sharing their ideas and so on and it also sort of relates to the sort of you know that sort of a stealth mode entrepreneur that doesn't want to share their idea in case someone steals it, you know, and, and, and debunking those sorts of myths in terms of how people think and work. And uh, if you just see as like uh, sharing what you know and sharing your opinions and sharing like your insights into, into how your experiences can help others and so on, like just offer that generously as, 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 as gener generous, generously as you possibly can. Right. Um, and don't see any barriers to that, you know, and then people are like, well, how do you make money out of that? And it's like, well, people, people don't necessarily know how to, to use that or utilize it or, or, or whatever. So if you want to become accountable for the results that your wonderful, generous knowledge and insights and so on can have for people, great, charge them for that. But like, you know, just putting yourself out there and putting your views out there and putting your experiences out there and so on, you know, it's really important. It's really important. It's both important for you because why, why would you want to put a constraint around your ability to express yourself. Why would you want to do that? You know, I'm a big fan of understanding what are the negative constraints in your life, what are the positive constraints in your life, and how do you take ownership of those constraints in order to get to where you want to be? Because as soon as you forfeit the constraints around you to other people, uh, that's when you don't start getting to exercise your creative skills in the way that you want to. That's when you don't got start. That's when you stop being able to make and treasure and nurture the connections with other humans and so on that you want to. And that's when you can't be a part of the communities that you want to as well. Like, you know, if, you're, if your mock boss or your manager or whatever says, no, you can't go to that event or something like that, then you're, you know, all of a sudden you're stopping yourself from being able to interact and meet and share and so on with the people that you want to. So learning how to push back on that and learning how to take ownership of that constraint and, be, and, 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 and going to the places that you want to go to and sharing the views that you want to share and offering generously the experiences and the knowledge that you have to others. Like all of a sudden you just start, all of these barriers that were around you that make you behave in a certain way, that make you talk in a certain tone of voice, that make you sort of go, well, I'm going to tell you this, but if you want to know this, it costs 50 quid, you know. Like, <laughs> those are the sorts of behaviours that, 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 that stop people from liking and trusting you, right? So don't do them. Yeah. Uh, and place value and place monetary gain and all that sort of thing on something else. When you talk about offering generously and sort of going to events or going to networking, etc., I think a I think a lot of people, my, maybe myself, up to about a year ago, included, would hate going to a networking event in the very traditional sense where you're meant to like be going out and and uh, giving out your business cards and and uh, just like selling yourself, doing like you know yeah. just elevator pitches and all of those kind of which for me, they don't work for me because uh, I'll do it the way that I am. I'm, and, um, and it was, I was speaking to someone and I can't remember who it was about it, but they were just like, just give and be human. You know, we're all humans and go and, you know, just go, if someone has something that's going on and they're not sure about it then just share. And uh, very much the way that, that well, you, the things that you're saying. And for me, that really turned around how, I grow a bit a business because before I was like, oh, I've got to have my script. Well, this is the, I think this is the telling of a good networking event in terms of who's organizing it and how they're facilitating it and so on and how they've put the audience together. Because if people turn up and people are like, oh, hey, Beth, what do you do? And, and you're like, 
oh, uh, you know, I run a co-working space and uh, you should sign up. It's a hundred pounds a month. You know, like it just, you know, all of a sudden you're pitching and people are expecting that pitch where it's just kind of like, hey, Toby, what do you do? I'm like, oh, I live in Brighton and I run my own business, you know, and they're like, oh, cool. Or is it, well, what does your business do? Do I want to buy the thing? You know, how much is it? You know, and it's like, who wants to, A, who wants to ask those questions and B, who wants to be asked those questions? But sometimes, you know, networking events, and I suspect you've been to them, and I certainly have. And, you know, they're, they're, they're the, the culture and ethos of the event and the way it's hosted creates an expectation for those questions to be asked and answered. Uh, and nobody wants to do that. You know, why, why would, I've, 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 got, I've got this mentality, which is I'm not going to pitch to anyone unless they're buying, right? So why, am I, why would I be selling if you're not buying? And I remember I was, I was hosting a content club thing the other day. And uh, you may have seen I launched this new thing called Poster a couple of weeks and months ago, um, which is like a content on demand thing. And then someone said, Toby, tell us about Poster. And I was like, really? <laughs> Do you want to know about that? And they're like, yeah. And I was like, oh, okay, well, it's this thing. And we, you know, you publish the thing and d- 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 click the button and buy the stuff and, you know, use it if you want. Don't use it if you don't. And, and then this woman messaged me afterwards and she was like, oh, I really want to help you, like, uh, you know, get your pitch down better and, you know, really clearly articulating your idea and so on and I'm like I don't need that help like that's what I I I, I gladly help others with that and if I wanted to pitch you this product you know I I would be (laughs) (laughs) know about it Uh, and the reason that I'm all a bit kind of like oh well you know to buy if you would want to you know is because I don't care like the audience that I'm addressing in this particular space right now is is, is not I've not invited them into this space uh, to hear about this or be sold to do you know what I mean I've invited them into this space to talk about Alice in Wonderland for 20 minutes do you know what I mean so that's why they feel safe in your presence because like there's nothing worse than like uh, well, there are other things worse. I hate that phrase. <laughs> <laughs> there are always things that are worse, I promise you. Um, Some of them have happened to us this week. <laughs> yes. um, but it's very cringeworthy to have like, oh, can we, can we go for a coffee? And then you have the, well, you, you can just see the, 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 the stages that people are going to when they are trying to sell you a business and it's, and, it, and it's, um, you know, you're having this, and I'm, mm. maybe I'm, you know, digging myself a bit of a hole here, but, um, you know, you're having this coffee, and then it's the niceties, and then it's the business experience, and then it's the pitch, and it's the pitch, 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 and it's just, and it's so jarring, and mm. and I don't think, and it's, I just think it's so outdated now for people to, uh, to, to be, expect to be behaving that way because it just breeds this. Well, at the, at the risk of sounding terribly digital world. marketing about it, it's not very targeted right yeah. so um why would you why would you risk discrediting your reputation and your ability to be trusted simply for the opportunity to pitch at something yeah um, and you know you know i've been to networking events where i end up sort of like you know sitting next to a lawyer or something like that and it's like okay well they're not going to buy the thing um but i am here for an hour <laughs> <laughs> and this is the person that i'm sat next to so it's like okay well you know uh, you know, and then you talk about holidays and you talk about kids and you talk about, you know, how you started your business or you talk, you know, and all these sorts of things. And then you've got someone there that, you know, if the, the openness and the chemistry is there, et cetera, then potentially that's a friend, you know, or potentially that's someone that could introduce you to someone that would like you to work with them and would like you to work with them and so on. So, um, and it just comes down to being generous and knowing when you want to listen and, you know, Another tip, um, <laughs> but this is, sort of, this is this is it's not my top tip, um, but it comes from it's a, Bright, a Brighton-based company called Think Productive, and a great guy called Graham who wrote this book called How to Be a Productivity Ninja, and one of his productivity he's got like nine rules for for productivity or something. And one of them around networking is ruthlessness, and it's that kind of like okay, well if you're in that business, if the purpose of being in this space is like learning is, is you know you've paid fifty pounds to go to this networking breakfast or something you know very expensive breakfast um uh, scallops and lobster thermidor before 10 o'clock i think you know and um and uh and and you're like okay well i'm here i've invested in being here so i need to try and work out who are the useful people and it's like and you're sitting and talking to someone and someone's like oh well you know i run a sandwich van or something or like that and you're like okay well that's not quite the thing and just and then but being politely ruthless in the way that's kind of like do you know what Jerry, it was lovely to meet you. Um, sounds like you're doing awesome stuff. The reason that I want to be here today is because I want to try and meet people that are interested in investing in their content potential or whatever. 
Um, and uh, it sounds like that might not be you. So if you don't mind, I'm just going to have a quick whiz around the room and see if I can see if I can meet some others. But it'd be lovely to stay in touch or whatever. You know, it's just that kind of like shut the conversation that. down in a polite and in, in, in way that that person is a you know they're there for a reason too. They've paid their fifty pounds to be there or whatever. They probably want to find people that can you know help them get cheaper signage or whatever you know or parking permits or whatever you know and hopefully there's someone in the room that can help them and by talking you taking up their time you're stopping them from achieving that thing too so uh, i say that i'm probably like useless at these things however hopefully that is a good tip uh, <laughs> for people <laughs> suffering the very thing that we are discussing Toby, i like i was gonna that, that it feels like a good segue in this polite ruthlessness um mm. about how you curate tedx yeah shut um, down shut down my dribble and let's get get to the good get to the good stuff. <laughs> I'm proud of that segue. I thought that was good to go polite ruthlessness curating TEDx. I thought that was because I imagine you'll need to use that skill. And mm. I, I, I I mean tell us look, tell us about the process of TEDx because I think for for what it is it's such a prestigious event for so many people and I think a lot of uh, uh, entrepreneurs or, or thought leaders would. Put having a TEDx talk mm. or TED talk as one of their kind of tick, like their tick boxes, what they want to do in their, their lives. Mm. I know that potentially that isn't the way that you hoped people would go around <laughs> um, talking to people. So talk us about talk to us about the whole process of curating a TEDx. Yeah, well, this I mean, this year the process is going to be outrageously different. You know, it's a it's a huge event to organise. You know, we have you know around sixteen hundred people in the dome. And we have to get close to 20 speakers and performers together and, and so on. And it's a beautiful sort of blend of theatre and conference, you know, and it doesn't really exist in, nothing else really exists in that format, in, in my opinion. Um, so, so it does take a long time. And every year that we do it, it takes longer because we, we always say we'd like to be able to organise this event in a shorter and shorter amount of time and become more efficient at the different processes. But the, the reality is, is every year we do it, our vision for it becomes grander. Uh, so we have to put more effort and time into making sure that, that every every little bit of it gets the attention that it requires. It's like the difference between like Thought Park and Disneyland or something. Do you know what I mean? Like Thought Park is just gray space and then a roller coaster and then gray space. Whereas Disneyland, like down to the, the very last bush, you know, it's thought about, you know. Uh, so that's kind of where I always try to push it. I'm trying to like, how can we how can we shape every little bit of interaction that someone has with this event? And, and, and truthfully, like this year, that, that, that objective and that way of thinking and working has just gone out the window because um, uh, we have no idea when we can do the event. We have no idea where we can do the event because, you know, the, the venue itself is, 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 is experiencing its own, its own sort of um, thoughts and conundrums around coronavirus, as many venues are. In previous years, you know, we would be well on our way to, we would probably be opening ticketing around this time. We would have half a dozen speakers booked. Um, we would have spent uh, easily north of, you know, 10, 15,000 pounds and things like venue and all that sort of stuff. Uh, and actually, we've just had to shut all of that down and have not, none of it by now. Where I am with it right now is we're just sort of trying to be as graceful as possible uh, in, our, in our ability to coast with nothing on, on the table. Um, uh, and working towards okay well when we do bring this event back to life probably next year now like what do we want it to look like and how different could it be um, does it need to be smaller does it need to be uh, more online does it need to be whatever you know so those are kind of not answering your question I'm afraid but that's it's it's that's where my head is at with this event right now I was very much in the process of starting to find speakers and you know the first speaker I booked was from California for example and um, that's now the right that's now not going to happen like i you know i need to look hyper local for speakers probably for whatever we do next because um we need to minimize travel and all of that sort of stuff simply due to social distancing so absolutely um, you can kind of go one or one or two ways you can either make it really really global and just and because and you know just make it totally online and mm. um, uh, maybe risk losing some of the intimacy and the theater that you say it's very difficult unless you prescribe everyone exactly what their environment should be like at home while they're watching tedx which you could do you could try and create a very <laughs> immersive <laughs> virtual experience or you, you you have to go very into and make sure that everybody is you know is, is not traveling and all the social distancing things um i mean with your with the speakers that 
you look for and choose to collaborate with is it is it the same as when you're collaborating with other people so is it is it having a, i imagine because it's not about you it's not about having a, a similar value set to what you mm. care about um, and what's the main thing that you're looking for from the speaker it's a difficult pill for people listening to swallow frequently because uh, wanting to do a ted talk is usually the 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 very first thing that i um uh, you know, or hearing that message or hearing that intention from someone is usually the first thing that makes me decide not to work with them. Uh, and, you know, and people are like, yeah, but how, you know, but that's, you know, that's not a good enough answer. I need to know how. And it's just like, the harder you push, you know, it's a bit like, you know, dating or something. It's just kind of like, so you're looking for a boyfriend. You're not. Are you sure? I'm a really good boyfriend. You would, you would probably really like me as your boyfriend, you know, and it's just like, whoa, you know, you would never approach anything like that. Right. So, so why, why, why is this opportunity any different? Um, and at the end of the day, like the, 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 the mission of, of the event is, is ideas and stories, right? It's not people. So um, the person telling the story usually comes last, you know, we, 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 we decide what is the, what's the, uh, you know, we call it the theme, but effectively it's the impact that we want the event to have this year you know what change do we want what change is going on in the world right now and how do we want to contribute to that what story can we tell on the day in order to be a useful part of that change what are the chapters and the themes and the and the ideas within that so is it going to be around race is it going to be around inequality are we going to talk about poverty are we going to talk about um you know sport you know what are the different things that we feel like are going to contribute to that and then it's a, and then it's a research exercise you know who who, where, what are the best stories going on right now? Where's the best research going on? Where's the best sharing going on? Um, and the very best speakers are the ones that I have to convince, not the other way around. Um, so like I said, it's a very difficult thing for a lot of people to hear. And, and I often um, get a lot of pushback on, on talking like this, but, um, uh, but if people want to know the truth. <laughs> no, that's really important. Um, and then as probably, um, like, like you said, a lot of people I mean, I'd absolutely hate to do a TEDx talk, so maybe, maybe I'll be Oh, well, let's, uh, let's make it happen. <laughs> I was going to be doing a reverse psychology, you know. But it's true, isn't it? You know, no, like, there, there are lots of conferences and there are lots of events that you can go to where someone speaks about, a very qualified speaker speaks about what they need to know. They share the information very well, and, and then that's that. But the difference with, and I think anybody that's been to a TEDx event knows, is that you come away... Uh, with potentially of a changed perspective or uh, renewed ins inspiration for something and 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 you're not going to oh, get you know there are there are there are people who pursue me on a you know on a regular basis that are just like i want you know tell me when do applications open how do i speak what do i do and i'm like well what do you want to talk about and they're like well what's what, what what's the theme like i'll you know i i i'm just you know i've been through this and i feel like i've got a really inspirational message and i just need to tell everyone and it's just like you wanting to tell people something is is, is not the magic ingredient <laughs> that's going to make this happen. Content, isn't it? You know, you wanting to share your information won't necessarily be what's useful to people, but, you know, sharing an idea that's going to change someone or emote some, uh, invoke some sort of reaction or uh, help or guide or those sorts of things. It's, it, it, again, I know you hate this word, but it's about this authenticity of why you wanting to share and why you're putting this message across and mm. you can't fake that and um i think for a lot of people that is what it's always going to have to come back to yeah, well i think in reality um there are you know and you know i've been in this this position myself you know when going through things like grieving the loss of a parent and so on like when you're going through something really challenging and difficult and then you start to, you know, you, you reach a point where you're learning, where, where learning to talk about that thing gives you power and gives you energy, right? Um, and, and if you haven't got people around you helping you with your speed checks on that, learning to use that, you can end up very going, you can go very far with it. You can go too far with it. And then you want, you end up pursuing opportunities to tell the story for your own, you know, as a, you know almost as, you know, as a therapeutic exercise. Um, and, and yeah, and some people might connect with that and some people might see themselves in that story and find it useful. Um, but if that's not your intention, your intention is to, to, is to share something uh, with the goal of, of getting something from it yourself, from a you know, mindful fulfillment sort of perspective. And really it has to be about, it's kind of 
okay, well, here's some experiences that I either pursued or didn't ask for or whatever. This is what I've learned. And I genuinely feel like that if more people could take a shortcut to learning this lesson, uh, the world would be a better place. You know, I've done this, I've learned the lesson. There's nothing more I need to, to do in order to resolve the situation that's done. Um, all I now need to do is, is, is try and make sure that less people experience this kind of suffering or more people experience this kind of enablement or whatever. Um, you know, and it's, you know, everyone's got their own version of, of what that is. Uh, it's just a lot of people end up pursuing the wrong thing in the need of seeking out some kind of personal fulfillment. I mean, not to end it, because I don't want to get kind of... Bring the energy up. <laughs> you no, know, but like, it, not to end on a really woo-woo note, and I'm known to do this, but um, it isn't no. <laughs> what you're talking about is either, it's, it, it's, it's, it's choosing an act of love, it's an act of love to share something in a way that you're hoping to benefit the other person and that to me is where there's been so many things going on with with, uh, with covid with you know the black lives matter protests uh, with uh, so much in the world that we're absorbing and the things that are really meaningful and the thing that where, where where real change is happening is where you see someone and you relate to their ex experience and you want to share and give and 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 choose to do that with with love and not in the kind of like in the romantic sense of the word but in all of the other mm. sense of and I mean, not to <laughs> to romanticize content or sharing or anything like that, but it is. It, it's about um, choosing to connect and, and be human with people when it is really beneficial. So, so our, our, our one of our most successful speakers at TEDx in the last couple of years was uh, a chap called Majid, and uh, you know, and his talk was 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 just called "Choose Love," you know, or the power of choosing love, and. Uh, you know, and he, um, you know, his background is that, you know, he had to flee war from his own country and make his way across Europe and had a very treacherous journey as, as, as many of, uh, as many of uh, he and his peers have had and, um, you know, and reached the UK and within, you know, and, and, and had to start with nothing here. And within a year or so, he was working on a music video with Elton John, you know, and, and then we showed that video and it was just, and it was really, um, and the video itself is a really beautiful telling of not his story, but like the story of the shared experiences that he's had with the refugee community coming over from Europe and doing, you know, having things like, you know, really dangerous journeys on boats and things like that. And it was just like, I've never felt that space like that. Like just the, 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 including myself, like the amount of people crying, the amount of people feeling like elation and joy, but also sadness at the same time. And you can just feel energy like that in a space. Do you know what I mean? Um, and, you know, and this whole, you know, and there's a reason that choose love has been a, a really core and important statement that's, that's gone around with the, 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 the movement of supporting refugee rights, because, because every time that you're faced with an opportunity to, or ch faced with a decision where there is a way of pursuing a love uh, incentivized uh, cause of action or something around fear or something around doubt or around, you know, sort of not wanting to offer something kindly or generously, you know, it takes you to very different places. And, and you know, for Majid, like, you know, and, um, you know, in, in the in the months leading up to his talk and the work that we did together, like the whole message in his heart was kind of like, every time I was faced with something difficult, whether it was leaving my home in a, you know, working out how to survive another day in a refugee camp, going on a boat, getting to the UK, working on music videos and stuff, you know, like every time I looked at this, I was like, how do I approach this decision with love, you know, and kind of like, and how do I take that choice? You know, and not only did that way of thinking allow him to survive, it allowed him to then thrive when he reaches in a place of safety. It's just fucking amazing. And 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 you want to call it woo woo if you like, but like when you when you break it down into into decisions, decisions, and moments by moments, and so on, like it has profound and meaningful impacts on our lives. And we should pursue that way of thinking and feeling. I really believe that. Wow, I feel like that's a really good way to finish. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's exactly right, and it's a, that's such a beautiful message. And um, is it, are they all recorded? Is there a way for people to? to yeah, to... Um, only very recently published on TEDxBrighton.com, so you oh, can amazing. watch that. Another, uh, just a beautiful kind of remark, just to add to that, is like Majid's. Um, you know, he's he's had to very learn English in a very short space of time. You know, and it was difficult for him to deliver the talk in English, and it was you know, and the audience had to work harder than usual in order to understand it too. But 
that you know when the when the message is 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 is, 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 is as perfect and as meaningful as that like people see through that stuff and they work harder to understand it and and it you know and it does land and it does connect so um yeah just to sort of add that caveat that like your ability to convey something isn't necessarily shouldn't shouldn't stop you from trying to to, to share it and convey it for sure Thank you so much, Toby, for taking um, an hour of your day to talk with us. It's been such a good chat. Is there anything that you want to kind of highlight or are you just happy to? No, just uh, carry on enjoying being what you're good at, right? <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Um, so just to wrap up, um, so thank you again, Toby, um, and thank everybody for watching. Um, so this is the last in our series of um, our Working Together, which has been sponsored by Classic County. So thank you very much to uh, you guys. Um, and uh, we hope it's been a really beneficial series for you all to watch. I really, really enjoyed um, being able to just chat to people that I don't often get a chance to talk to um, in such depth about what they're up to and the importance of collaboration and, and community in their lives. Um, so hopefully there'll be a series too, but for now, thank you so much and bye.